Section 3 provides an examination of the factors manufacturers need to consider when transitioning from industry 3.0 to 4.0. We examine the considerations and challenges manufacturers need to consider when imp implementing data collection and data management for a smart factory and explore the transition from industry 3.0 to 4.0 within the automotive manufacturing sector. We conclude with an exploration of the functional safety considerations when transitioning to a fully automated smart factory. Data management, data collection. During the implementation of data management system, the collection of the data and the challenges this creates needs to be considered. Challenges such as the types of data and complexities within need to be considered. Having complex or too much data can become time consuming to decipher and may be unnecessary. Compliance is a challenge within data collection, ensuring specific uh, standards are met such as ISO standards to name one. In our organisation, data from machines is kept internal, however it is intranet based for reporting purposes and transparency, but in a secure network only visible to those necessary. A secondary system is also being installed known as SCADA to analyse all robot running data and automatically make reports with breakdowns, <coughs> quality issues and efficiency rates to name some of the many advantages. Data management storage made up of big data and cloud storage. Big data, the amount of data being collected and stored by manufacturers is growing rapidly from industry 3.0 to 4.0. Whilst manufacturer, manufacturers are used of collecting data for data analytics and results, the real change is a severe volume of data being captured and processed. Within company growth, um, this does increase the investment that will be needed for equipment storage data and transitional data process applications. So where cloud storage comes into play, um, moving from the enterprise to the factory floor, <coughs> where generally the cloud isn't being utilized properly. Um, in the past, more production related data share across multiple facilities within the organization are able to use the cloud storage to store data, collect data, and distribute to internal suppliers, external suppliers, and whom it is concerned. Uh, so with visualisation in regards to transitioning from industry 3.0 to 4.0, there are several factors that need to be considered uh, to make sure there's a smooth transition. One being artificial intelligence, with the machines becoming more intelligent now and creating more data and information to offload, we need to make sure that the way we visualise it and display it uh, is clear so that the whole audience can understand from shop level to management. And we also have augmented reality, so uh, an example of this will be a manufacturing firm using Google Glasses to uh, use some visual training so the associates can understand what parts go where, how to move, and when to use them. Um, Cyber security from industry 3.0 to 4.0 um, is extremely important. So integrated security is um, the need for to strengthen um, from cyber attacks and, and the possible threat of a cyber attack. Um, the data <coughs> is live and it's available to suppliers uh, and all the supply chain network so therefore um, encryption of messages um, and files is, is extremely um, important um, design of parts and protection of um, specifications of the model um, is in increasingly important to, in the industry 4.0 world so encryption is now becoming a big part of the transition from industry 3.0 to 4.0 Due to the amount of information and devices we use are digitalised now, uh, this increases the risk of a cyber attack. Um, due to the fact that we're connected between all internal departments, suppliers, customers, or through uh, electronic devices, uh, if there was to be a cyber attack, it can affect you as a manufacturing plant, different departments, different groups, and also customers and suppliers. So the need for encryption is increased to make sure that when you're sharing data, you can't fall into the wrong hands easily, uh, and there's hack prevention in place. With the manufacturing industry evolving at a significant pace, the need for increased flexibility, efficiency, and speed of production has evolved into what we now refer to as Industry 
The smart factory with intelligent networks where everything from the assembly line to goods outward is connected. Autonomous, autonomously exchanging information and triggering actions is becoming the norm. Whilst this can be extremely beneficial in increasing efficiency within an organisation, it also brings with it new risks that organisations must consider. Just like in health and safety, where a risk assessment is completed to highlight and mitigate risk to the workforce, the same must be done for the in uh, introduction of Industry 4.0 to ensure you don't leave your organisation open to threats. These main risks include items such as vast amounts of data which are automatically collected, being available on the internet for all who are tech savvy to be able to access. Cloud-based storage systems are exposed to outside attacks, data can be stolen, interaction between systems can be disrupted and complete system structures can be paralysed in, ca in, case in cases of industrial espionage, all of which are big risks that must be taken into consideration when performing risk analysis when it comes to Industry 4.0. Authorization determines what clients are able to do on a system, if they have permission to access or use a file requested or not. The clients with the most privileges are known as super users and have the, the authority to create and delete clients and have full access to assign roles to each. Uh, it is often coupled with authentication which requires the client to be identified and confirmed. Um, this may include a password and username. At Rolls Royce Motor Cars, the, the, the authorization factor is used to enable access to database, files, plans, etc. Uh, with managing self optimization uh, from, from industry 3.0 to 4.0, uh, it's changing a lot uh, now with all devices and machines and equipment connected with each other. Um, full optimization is key. Um, so optimization in terms of performance, in terms of quality, in terms of energy consumption. Um, previously, this was maybe done manually through management or teams within the departments, whereas now moving into industry 4.0, the machines are doing it themselves. So they're um, identifying faults within the process and highlighting them straight away, or they're identi identifying a, an excessive use in energy or a poor performance from the, product, uh, from the machine. Um, and flagging it up for further investigation to make sure that it's fully optimised. So customers uh, transitioning um, from industry 3.0 to 4.0 undoubtedly revolutionises how we develop our manufacturing processes, um, but it also improves how we deliver products and services to our customers, allowing us as suppliers to become much closer to our customers to understand the requirements. Uh, with the collaboration between suppliers, manufacturers and customers through features that Industry 4.0 brings such as cyber physical production systems, uh, internet of things <coughs> and cloud computing, uh, we can collate big data that can be analysed through advanced computer systems to enable production organisations <coughs> to make informed decisions. Some of this data comes from customer feedback and enables us to identify key areas within the manufacturing processes that could benefit from uh, innovation and improvement. For customers this means that they have more involvement with the manufacturing processes um, of the product that they desire along with giving them an increased confidence in the product. <coughs> Transition from Industry 3.0 to Industry 4.0 is hugely dependent on automation and solid physical systems. With this in mind, a lot of uncertainty is created for humans already in production roles and new, op uh, new job opportunities. New roles within industry are increasing rather than reducing due to increased production volumes in certain sectors requiring more job roles with slightly different skill sets. For example, in our organisation, the transition currently to move from manual spraying process to full automation. This transition opens new skilled job opportunities for the daily running of the operations, maintenance of the robots and equipment, and further robot programmers, software engineers, and robot operators. Uh, new roles of today require more cognitive, analytical, and social approach, opposed to this in previous times where a set trade such as a sprayer were a prerequisite for a production role. Skills gap. As we move from industry 3.0 to 4.0, um, a lot of people believe that jobs would be 
become non-existent through the development of machines and uh, PLCs. Um, with this PLCs and machines intervention, they realised that humans still needed to, in to intervene and give their skill knowledge. Um, so training was undertaken to support and help industries and manufacturers operate the machines um, throughout. Um, there are some key areas of manufacturing need to better prepare their operators to empower the workers to adjust to the challenges ahead. Um, the industry of IOTs expand its and IT operation coverage. Companies need to equip workers with good training and developments for the future. So if you're going into training then, um, new roles becoming available. Uh, to support new technologies, organisations need to consider the skill gap from the existing workforce um, to what is required for the new age of technology. Training is a key part of being able to progress to Industry 4.0 as we have to evolve our workforce to enable them to be able to fulfil the new job requirements. Uh, the example where an associate, as an example, that where an associate used to assemble a particular sub-assembly. Uh, we may have to train them to use the interfaces for automated systems that may now do the job um, more efficiently. Also not forgetting that the experience from the associates should also be considered to assist the integration of new technologies as they can play a key part in quality monitoring. Uh, this also brings um, with it solutions through methods and techniques such as Industry 4.0 uh, training devices which let employees self-guide self -guide their way through new processes protecting uh, precious resources. They collect data um, on trainee progress in real time allowing for continuous involved improvement uh, and the way and, and they offer uh, media rich instructions customizable for every new task. At Rolls-Royce there is evidence of this already as we are starting to use uh, augmented reality glasses to train associates new work packages. Change management is a process to prepare individuals and organisations to transition from the current state to a desired state. These changes happen as companies progress to become or continue to be successful. As technologies advance, change management is becoming more digitalised with new technologies and methods introduced, which has been a key factor leading into the fourth industrial re revolution. Um, with constant revolution within technology um, and industries, it has become increasingly important to ensure buy-in from the whole business as we progress. Uh, within the restructuring of organisations, when they want to move from industry 3.0 to 4.0, um, it's key to note that organisations will still primarily be process based. The change with industry 4.0 means instead of that process being carried out by a human, it will be carried out by an intelligent piece of machinery or robot. Therefore, within an organisation, the need for manual workers within the structure will reduce greatly if not become extinct altogether. However, with the reduction of manual workers will become a great need and necessity to create and hire system support experts. These will range from machine robot maintenance staff to machine or robot programmers. Cyber security experts will also be required when this role didn't even exist in most organisations 20 years ago. Organisation structure will differ depending on their business plan. All of the roles mentioned previously, for instance, could be a supply service from an external company. Either way, an organisation Either way an organisation implements Industry 4.0, one thing is for sure and that's that their structure will within their organisation will have to change to fully adopt a more efficient and smart factory. Employment demographics, uh, so with 186,000 people employed directly in manufacturing, uh, most of these are concentrated in the West Midlands in the North West, uh, but we also have one of the best that's uh, located in the South, Rolls Royce most cars. Um, <laughs> Employed within that uh, are most of the world's <laughs> most skilled engineers, uh, with the average age of employees at 42. Uh, so within that we break it down, so if we go 34.7%, uh, 
uh, of new intake, so below the age of 30. Um, between the age of 30 and 50 are 51.5, and above 50 is 13.8. So over the years, um, a number of women have employed. 10.1% um, in 2016 uh, raised to 12% in 2017. And so as we go on, uh, that continues to raise because uh, women accounted for 14.1% of engineers in the automotive sector. Uh, and this in, continues to increase uh, as we go into industrial 4.0. The movement towards automation is accelerating at a rapid pace. And there's a strong argument if the globalised industry continues with its adoption as it is, then significant reviews of political, social, socio-economic, educational, economic and ethical perspectives will be needed. Technology as a whole is beginning to cost more jobs than it creates. Whilst machines making machines is a cost reality, inevitably humans still need to be involved in the process at some point. Ever since the creation of the spinning jenny in the 1770s, machines and technology are, have been replacing humans in ever more complex and intricate operations and processes. Now, in the fast-paced world of uh, consumer-driven, uh, sorry, the fast consumer-driven world, Machines and technologies are able to outperform humans in almost every field with 24-hour, zero defect and repeatable work. In the environment described above, it seems increasingly unlikely that education by itself will be, uh, will be insufficient to solve the problem of the technological unemployment. Frey and Osborne conducted a study in 2013 which examines how susceptible jobs are to computerisation. Their detailed analysis resulted in the finding that 702 occupations are highly susceptible to computerization within the USA. Uh, they argue about 47% of the total US po working population is at risk, which amounts to just over 60 million people. While the concerns over technological employment has so far proven somewhat exaggerated, the reason why human labour has prevailed is linked, to the di linked directly to our ability to quickly, and in some cases inexpensively, acquiring new skills and knowledge, um, otherwise it would be computer programmers. Uh, with that being said, this will uh, become increasingly challenging as new work requires a higher degree of cognitive abilities. At a time when technological changes is happening even faster, uh, a main hurdle for workers is to adopt and thus surging costs in education result. A degree gained in the UK can now cost up to £9,250 a year, putting it out of reach the majority of those people likely to be impacted by computerization and therefore fueling the problem of unemployment by technology. So I see uh, ICE 6150, so that's the electrical, uh, electronic and programming electrical devices. So there are two fundamental uh, underpinning principles, so safety life cycle so it's the development that aims to eliminate uh, errors by design um, and then potentially dangerous conditions and activate proactive and corrective uh, mechanisms to prevent hazards. Uh, IEC 61511 Industrial Processes. Uh, this is a technical standard which uh, sets out uh, practices in the engineering of systems to ensure the safety of industrial processes through the use of instrumentation. ICE 62061 states the functional safety standards for electrical, electronic and programmable electronic control systems and examines the overall life cycle from the concept phase through to, to decommission. Uh, ISO 10218, uh, <laughs> industrial robots uh, specifies the requirements and guidelines for the integral safe design and protective measures and information for use of industrial robots. Uh, the IEC 61784 and EN 50159 and IEC 62280 are all three standards that make up the networking development, um, providing safety and security uh, through general rules, installations, rail application communications, and also <coughs> basic requirements in safety related communications. Um, IEC 62443 is all about security. It's a global standard for the security of industrial control system networks. 
that helps organisations reduce both the risk of failure and exposure of ICS networks to cyber threats. This standard was produced by the International Society of Automation and was taken over by the International Electrotechnical Commission for further development. Um, as you can see on the slide here and also here next to me, um, this is our group exploration of the functional safety considerations when transitioning from Industry 3.0 to 4.0. Um, we had a group discussion um, with the, what the transitions were between Industry 3.0 to 4.0 um, within our work environment within the luxury automotive manufacturing sector. Um, Within this section of the presentation, we have examined the factors that uh, manufacturers need to take into consideration when transitioning to 3.0 to 4.0, and also what challenges they might come up against when implementing data collection and data management within a smart factory. From this, we have then explored the functional safety considerations which are here when fully trans transitioning to a fully automated smart factory, and we have come to the conclusion that the main factors can be broken down into six sections. These are materials, machines, manpower, mother nature, methods, and we originally had measure, but it's now gone into management. And then within those, we have smaller sections, which are crucial to implementing a smart factory.